Warren Buffett buys Barrick Gold, I buy a different mining stock. I'm extremely confident in the near-term performance of this stock through at least the end of 2020. Let's do it. What's going on everybody? My name is Matthew. Welcome back to my channel and today we are talking all things Kirkland Lake Gold Limited, ticker KL. This is one of the most efficient gold mining stocks out there and in my personal opinion they are a fantastic play on gold, which as you know is a hedge against economic uncertainty and inflation. Give me the format. First, as always, an overview of the company, what KL does and where they operate. Second, the absolutely juicy financials. Third, the superpower of gold mines in gold rallies. And this is a very interesting part of the video. Fourth, what I'm gonna do. Now before we jump into things, I wanna give a serious shout out to our Discord community. Ari, our resident value investor, shared this stock with the rest of us, pointing out the massive potential here. He started his position on July 21st, and since then he's gone up over 10% on that position. And shout out to everyone else on the Discord who has helped build this community. You know who you are. All right, part one, an overview of the company. Kirkland Lake Gold is, of course, a company that mines gold. So let's start there with their gold mines. Now this part won't be the most interesting, but stick with me here because I think we have a really cool video today. So, their main mines include the Fosterville Mine in Victoria, Australia, which has huge exploration potential. The Makassa Mine in Ontario, Canada, which is actually a world leader in the use of battery-powered equipment. Just a fun fact. Oh yeah, and also it's expected to double gold production. The Holt Complex, also based in Ontario, and this is actually three underground mines feeding a central mill. It's one of the most efficient gold mills in the region. Heads up, you'll see the word efficient used a lot when describing KL. Then you've got the Northern Territory, which is also in Australia, and finally Detour Lake, which was a relatively recent acquisition made by KL. This new mine is expected to produce solid results for the next 20 years. And we could dive deeper into all of this mumbo jumbo, but I think it's too technical for this video, so let's move on. All you need to know now is that KL has some solid prospects, KL is efficient in their extraction process, and KL is impactful with their capital allocation, which just means that the company spends their money very well. Now for part two, their juicy financials. Let's take a look at their Q2 earnings, starting with their balance sheet. We see they have 537 million in cash and no debt. Okay, but seriously, no debt is absolutely awesome to see. They have about 701 million in current assets, 359 million in current liabilities, giving them a current ratio of about 1.95, which is absolutely stellar. We like that to be above one for near-term financial health. Now let's take a look at their revenues to see just how efficient KL really is with their mining operations. Top line revenue is at almost 581 million, a 107% increase from a year ago. And after all these mining related costs, KL walks away with 337 million in earnings from operations. That is an operating margin of 58%, which is very impressive. After everything else, we end up with a net earnings of 150 million for Q2 of 2020, which is a massive move up from a year ago. If any of that got lost in translation, it basically means KL was able to produce a lot of revenue without spending too much money. And if you're worried about the effects of the illness on the KL mining process, do not worry. Workforces reached pre rony levels by the end of Q2, so we're back in action. So we know their balance sheet is solid, we know they have high operational efficiency, but here is the craziest part of it all. Part three, the superpower of gold mines in gold rallies. Because KL is a gold mining company, as the price of gold continues to rise, so do KL's margins and their earnings. And this might sound obvious at first, but just think about it. Think about a lemonade stand. If you're selling lemonade, you have to buy the lemons and then turn it into lemonade and sell the lemonade. But if the price of lemons increases dramatically, you have to sell your lemonade at a higher price. But that doesn't mean you're making more money because you have to buy lemons at a higher price too. So really your cost is moving up along with the price of lemonade. This is in contrast to mining companies like KL. KL has a range of costs that it will generally take to produce gold, but if the price of gold skyrockets, that doesn't mean it costs more to produce gold because it doesn't affect their equipment or their workers or their labor. KL is just getting more money for the same product they were producing a month ago or a year ago. Let's try a digestible example. 
It's like if we were running an apple orchard and it cost me $5 to pay Dan over here to pick 100 apples. And apples sell for $2 each. So two times 100 is $200 in revenue. And that means I net $195 because I sell them all for $200 and pay Dan the five. Then suddenly demand for apples skyrockets and now all apples are $20 each. I have Dan pick another 100 apples. I now make $2,000 in revenue but I still only have to pay Dan $5 to pick 100 apples, meaning I profit $1,995. So I went from earning $195 to $1,995, literally just because the price of apples went up and the cost of Dan's work stayed the same. The same goes for KL. Just like apples, if the price of gold goes up, that doesn't mean it costs any more to mine the gold. So their margins and earnings will only increase just like the apple farm. This would be different if you needed gold to mine gold, just like you need lemons to make lemonade. Take a look at this. The average realized gold price, meaning what KL on average sold their gold for in Q2, was $1,716 per ounce versus $1,320 a year ago and $1,586 last quarter. Well, here's the price of gold now. So that 58% operating margin we just talked about is only going to get higher. Of course, KL could ramp up production, increasing operating costs, but they would likely only do that if there's more gold to be found. So this whole concept about gold prices and gold mining is not only good for investors because it means increased profits. Because those increased profits, in this case, mean more share buybacks and increased dividends both of which are great and beneficial to share price appreciation. All right, so part four, what am I going to do? I'm currently holding a position in KL and I'm pretty confident in this position, but if I didn't have any shares yet, I would be comfortable still dipping my toes a little bit, maybe buying a small portion of my intended position for KL. I'm definitely gonna be keeping my eye out for any dips on this stock and the only reason I might trim my position is if there's a major change in regards to gold price behavior. And that of course could be caused by a wide range of different things. But I don't see myself selling out completely out of this position for a long, long time because KL is not solely based on the price of gold. KL can still be a very profitable company even if gold is not in this crazy bull market. If you found any value in this video and I hope you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and read our quote of the day. You might just learn something. Make sure to follow me on Instagram for daily posts about my portfolio, stocks I'm watching, and all that good stuff. If you're watching at this point in the video, you are the real MVPs. Don't forget your peace and thank yous.